information as well. Okay, but let's get on to what we're going to talk about today, and that's the Google search page. Now, I used to just show this page and then get into my spiel. And what I discovered is people were associating the Google browser with the Google search engine. They are separate. They're both Google, but they're separate. Uh, and, and to illustrate that, I thought I'd do a couple of more slides that I didn't have in previous versions of this presentation. And that's because you can change in your browser the default search. It doesn't have to be Google. If you're using Chrome and you're using Google, you're using two Google products. But on your in your Google Chrome or in Firefox or in Brave or in any of the others, you can set up whatever your def what you want to be the default search engine is. In Chrome, what you do is you go into your settings and you go to search engine. When you do, you'll get a drop down box. It'll look like that. And you can choose Google, DuckDuckGo, EchoAsia, uh, Yahoo, and Bing. Here is, uh, this is Google. And a lot of times Google doesn't have the word Google. They have some kind of a, a drawing. Sometimes it's even a video. And you can see this is a video if you clicked on it. So sometimes it may look like this. If you go to DuckDuckGo, it may look like this. As if DuckDuckGo is your default browser, I'm sorry, your default search engine. Uh, Echosia, uh, Echosia, I guess is how it's pronounced, is, uh, uh, is another one that they promote and it's uh, the, the search the web to plant trees. And so that's another search engine. And then there's Yahoo, which by the way, was just sold by Verizon this past week and is now owned by a conglomerate who probably will end up selling it to somebody else. But anyway, uh, so we don't know what the future of Yahoo is going to be. And then the Microsoft Bing search engine, if you're, this is, still in my Google browser, but I can have Bing as my default search engine. So you can use any of them. I'm going to mostly focus on Google because that's what I use most of the time. But a lot of what I'm going to be talking about is applicable to the other search engines that are out there. So this is, again, the Google search page. So what is a search engine? A search engine is a website connected to a database that catalogs other websites. It will search the actual text of these other websites. Uh, a computer search program or spider follows the links on the web pages to regularly and automatically rebuild this database. These spiders are going out all the time and what they are, they're electronic robots uh, that search the internet and collect everything that they find, all the information, the web, what websites, uh, the location, the URL of the website and so on, they put it all in a big database. And so when you go to look for something, you're not actually looking at each web page to find it. It's going out to this gigantic database that's out there. Some of the top search engines I've already mentioned, uh, here's, here's their, uh, some of the logos for the top search engines, but Google is the most popular search engine with, believe it or not, 92.26 market share compared to 2.83 of the second place, which is Microsoft's Bing. Google processes 40,000 search queries every second. That's more than 3.5 billion searches per day or more than 1.2 trillion searches a year globally. Google has permeated our digitally reliant lives to such an extent that the very word Google has become a verb. Go Google it. So let's Google it. Let's see what we get. First, if you enter a word, uh, you will sometimes see, and it, it varies from time to time, because Google keeps changing these things. So it may not look exactly like this, but this information is still available for it. But I put in the word seniors. And as soon as I did that, it gave me some menus underneath. We're gonna talk about what these are. Uh, but when I put in the word seniors, you can see there's all news, images, videos, maps, 
and then more. And then there's over on the right settings and tools. Let's take a look at some of those. When we look at news, what it's doing is it's looking at about 98 million, 99 million news articles that contain the word seniors. If you look at, at images, you'll start, it'll pop up and show you a few images and you can have some key words and you'll notice way over on the right, it gives you some other alternatives, including collections and safe search. And what safe search does basically is keep anything that might be X-rated or R-rated from your eyes or from whoever is going to be doing the search. Uh, so it's a safety, uh, especially when there's kids involved, when you're doing the search with kids and so on. Now, if we go over to videos, what you're going to see, you're going to see the word seniors in about uh, 50, 573 million videos. If you click on maps, it'll actually bring up a map of something to do with seniors. Uh, in this case, it was a senior center locally uh, near where I was when I did this uh, screenshot. Uh, if, you sir, if you click on the more button, you have shopping, you have books, you have flights, and you have finance. And that more button may vary depending upon which one of the words that you're highlighting. So it may be, it, it may be slightly different. Now, if you go over to the settings, you've got, you can set the language that you're searching with. Uh, you can hide explicit results, hide private results, advanced search, search history, and then your data in search. Now, when you click on tools, it brings up a menu down below and you'll see it says anytime and all results. This is a, a really good tool to remember and use. As an example, when I clicked on tools and it came up anytime results, you'll see up here at the top. And down here, I, I click the down arrow and I see recent. Or I might see something under tools. I might see size, color, type, time, and usage rights when it's images. This is by news, whether it's recent. Now, when would you use something like this? What I like is the anytime under all. And when you click on that, you can say anything in the last hour, 24 hours, week, month, year, or you can put a custom range. Now, why would you want to do something like this? Well, let's say you're searching for something and you know what happened just in the last couple of days. Well, if you look for, if you just say anytime, you may find something with the same term from four years ago or five years ago. It's got nothing to do with what you're looking for. Well, if you can narrow that down and say, okay, in the past week or in the past 24 hours, you're more likely to find what you're looking for quickly or more quickly or just find it, period. Under all results, you can have all results or just verbatim. In other words, that if you've got more than, if you've got several words, it means it's going to be in the order in which you have got them. So let's do some searching. So how advanced search syntax will make your searches better. Reduce the number of results you have to look through. So. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to start out with a large number and you're going to start to narrow it down. Sometimes when you first look for an item, you're going to find millions or hundreds of thousands or thousands of possibilities that have, and most of them have nothing to do with what you're looking for. But then you're going to try to uh, narrow it down. So get to, you want to get more relevant results that are specific to what you're looking for. So you want to bring your relevant results right to the top. And you want to access better information faster. And you want to gain a better understanding of how a search engine works to do that. So what you want to do is start simple. Start with one word or two words that are going to at least get you started in your search. Ignore spelling. It doesn't matter. Google is really good about guessing what you mean. Sometimes they're wrong, but they're real good about guessing. 
Use web-friendly words. Instead of saying, my head hurts, say headache. In other words, try to make it succinct and for easy for Google to find what you're looking for. Less is more. Simple, one or two word search terms usually gives you the broadest results. Start with a short, a short search term, then refine your results by adding more words. Now, how are you going to add more words? One of the things, I don't know if it's my next one here. Yeah, one is by using descriptive words. But add words found in resulting pages. And, and this is a, a key to how I find a lot of things that I'm looking for that other people don't think of. And, and in all of the articles I've read that try to help you in your searches, they don't include this. And I say, add words found on the resulting pages. When you find uh, uh, some results, look at some of those pages and see what some of the key words are. Some of them may be a better term than what you're using or using them with the term that you're using, you're more likely to get what you're eventually looking for. And don't worry about case sensitivity. These uh, the searches aren't case sensitive. So uh, don't worry about that. You don't have to be exact. Some of us who, who are really good at catching things that are misspelled or the wrong case, Google doesn't care. And don't worry about punctuation. Search ignores punctuation, such as some of the ones that you're seeing there and other special characters. However, some of them have special meaning. So you have to be careful when you use the uh, asterisk that it does, it, it is a well, it indicates a wild card. So you don't want to use that in your search unless you're doing it purposely. Okay, let's look for something. Here, here's, we'll start simple. As I mentioned to you, I belong to, uh, uh, a user group called the Sarasota Technology User Group. But let's say I was looking for, and it, it, its acronym is STUG. So let's say I wanna look for STUG. I type in STUG, what I'm going to find is whole bunches of things about tanks. Well, that's not what I'm looking for. So how can I eliminate all of the tank information? Well, there is a way you do that. What you do is you, you put the word tank with a minus sign right in front of it, no space, minus tank. So I want to look for the, for the term stug, but if it has the word tank in it, don't include it in the results. And when I do that, you'll see it does show some pictures of tanks, but what rises to the top is the Sarasota Technology User Group. And then right under it is meeting Sarasota Technology User Group. Then the next one is something to do with uh, with guns and, and, and tanks, but it brought to the top what I was looking for. Okay, let's say, uh, so now I know the word Sarasota is included. Now, if I put Stug and the word Sarasota with it, because I found that word Sarasota in my results, now, bingo, all of the results I'm finding all have to do with the Sarasota Technology User Group. So I have narrowed it down to what I want to find, and now I can start using those. And then get down to the specific item that I am looking for. Using quotes for exact phrase. I came from Utica, New York. When I was a little kid, we used to go look, at, go to the ball games that a, a, the team at the time was called the Utica Blue Sox. Back when I was a kid in the 50s, 40s, late 40s and early 50s, the Utica Blue Sox were a farm team of the Phillies. So I got to see a lot of uh, a lot of the baseball players who became very famous in the late 50s when the Phillies became uh, a world, became world champions. Uh, I used to go to the games. I want to look up some information about the Utica Blue Sox. So when I did, and I typed in Utica Blue Sox, I found about 60, 61,000 results. If I put Utica Blue Sox in quotes, I narrowed it down to 20,000, 21,000 uh, results. So by using quotes for an exact phrase, you're narrowing down your search. So using a phrase. When I was in college, I went to Ithaca College, which, and I majored in radio TV. My roommate went on to uh, write the... Uh, uh, co-write a screenplay for a movie. And I remember the name of the movie and it was called Nothing in Common. But I couldn't think, you know, when we get older, we forget things. 
Uh, it's called CRS or can't remember stuff. It's a, it's a disease that we seniors get. And, uh, and so I couldn't remember his last name. I haven't seen him since uh, the early 1960s. Uh, so I, I couldn't think of his name. So I said, well, he wrote nothing in common. Okay, so who wrote nothing in common is what I put in the phrase. And bingo, nothing in common popped up. And there it is. It says Rick Podell and Michael Preminger. And Mike Preminger was my roommate in college. So I found that right away. And so I put in his name and bingo. I found out that he was, uh, he became a comedian. He was on uh, the jo Johnny Carson show. Boy, that dates us, doesn't it? Uh, he was on the Johnny Carson show. And there's even on YouTube, some, uh, some of his bits on Johnny Carson are available on YouTube. So I was able to see, see him in action, see him as an adult because I hadn't seen him since he was, uh, you know, what, uh, 19, 20, 21 years old. And I haven't seen him since. So I was able to, so this was a, a, a good way to, to get that information. So what is a Boolean search? A Boolean search is a way to organize your search using a combination of keywords and the three main Boolean operators, and, or, and not, to produce more accurate and more relevant results. So let's kind of take a look at that. Uh, and we, we'll do that in just a minute. Uh, I've got these, I think, out of order. I don't go into this a little bit more. Let's, anyway, we're gonna solve some problems. So we have an HP printer and we need some help. So we type in HP printer help. And you'll notice what we get for an answer. First thing, the top one is an ad. And it's definitely not HP and we don't know who they are. If we, we have to go down about four items on the list and you'll see support.hp.com. And so that's probably HP, hp.com is their website. So I had to get through a couple of uh, three ads to get there. And I don't know who those ads are. And I've, I, I myself, back when I didn't know how to do a lot of this stuff, I had a problem with an HP printer. I called or I contacted one of these people and they wanted a whole bunch of money to help me. And they had a, uh, they had definitely uh, an accent not that I was not familiar with. And they were trying to sell me and tell me they had to get into my computer and help me. And they were going to charge me $150 to $300 or something to do that. And I realized, well, you know, wait a minute, I may not be, am I talking to HP? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I wasn't. So be careful when, you, when you're doing searches that you're finding the right answers as well. So there's the one we wanted. So the top site is not always the best or even safe. So uh, let's say I'm looking for the HP printer uh, error code list. Well, the first one is uh, a, a group, and that's definitely not HP. And all of these are not HP. This is the only HP one. And you'll see there's an HK-EN. That means it's a Hong Kong uh, HP website. It is not even here in the States or it's not even here in, in North America. So that may be still okay to go to, but that may not be still where we wanna go. So out of the whole first page or first top of the first page uh, is not, there's not a really good website to go to find what we're looking for. So the top site is not always the best. So there's a lot of HP errors out there, way too many, right? And uh, so this is it, this is the error code list from one of them. And you'll see there's an, another and there's another and neither one of those are HP. But if you look over on the right, there is ink involved and, and so on. So there's, I don't see HP there at all. So you, except the top one, it does say hsupport.hp.com. So you want to make sure that your the top site isn't always the best, and it may not even be safe. So be very careful. So there's the one that I would have wanted. Also, here's some other things that you can do when you're searching. One of them is file types. 
this is great. I found, especially if you do presentations and you want to find some information, you want to find, let's say, or you want a, a, a file type and then the operator. So let's say I want to find something with a Stug Sarasota and I want it to be a PDF. So I put in Stug Sarasota and then file type colon PDF. And notice it's only finding PDF documents in the results. These are all PDFs. So that's a good way. So if you're looking for a spreadsheet to do something, well, you might find a million articles about it, but let's say you want to find that spreadsheet. Well, then you put file type colon XLS or XLSX, and you're only going to have answers that it's only going to find things that will actually show you a spread, the spreadsheets. Find related pages uh, using, uh, using related. Uh, I tried to do this with your, with your website for your user group, and I didn't get any results. So I'm going to show you one that I did, just to show you that sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. But this was the Rochester Computer uh, Society Incorporated website, or the RCSI. And when I put related colon and then rcsi.org, I found other user groups. So it doesn't always work, but it is something that you can try to use. Did you know that you can track your packages easily without going to your UPS, your FedEx, your DHL, or the United States Postal Service websites, just type in the tracking number in your Google box on your, on your search engine and whatever search engine you have. Uh, type in whatever the tracking number is. And when you do, if it's, if it's certain numbers, it knows, oh, that could be a DHL or a USPS number. And it's gonna say, okay, which one do you want? And you click on it. And what it will do is it'll give you the tracking information. So you don't have to go to each and say, gee, I don't know this. I got a tracking number, but I don't know who it's from. You know, I don't know uh, which delivery company is, is handling it. You know, just put tracking number in your search box and it will figure it out. And then it'll tell you, well, go, uh, uh, here, here's the results. Get the time search time and the city or country. You don't have to go to a website that says, uh, I wanna know what the various times are in the world. Sometimes there's, there's a, uh, a website that, that you type in the time and it'll tell you what, where, uh, what time it is in a different place or, or whatever. Uh, if you just put time colon and then whatever city you're looking for, it'll give you the time right at that time. So this screenshot was taken at 9.35 a.m. in Florida. Uh, and it was 1050, so that couldn't have been, I, I've mislabeled that because I changed the screenshot. Uh, but it was actually at uh, probably 950 that day. It, was, it, was, it wasn't that time anyway. I didn't correct, I updated this, this screenshot and didn't update the, the slides, sorry about that. But it, it actually will tell you the time, the exact time of what it is right now. What about currency exchange? Uh, you see something online and it says it's worth uh, so many pounds sterling or, or so many euros and so on. All you have to do is you type in $200 in pounds like I got there. And this was done, uh, let's see, does it show the date? I can't remember what, the, yeah, March 16th, a couple of months ago. But at that particular moment, it was at 143.89 pounds sterling was $200. Uh, and if I did it right now, it would be slightly different. It might be quite a bit different depending upon how the currency is. is. But this is a way to get the most current value of currency from one to another. So it doesn't have to be dollars to pounds or it could be pounds to dollars and it could be something uh, to other. It doesn't have to be even in dollars. How about checking the weather? Just put the, the word weather and then the zip code. And it'll come up with whatever the weather is at the time, at that zip code. Get real-time stock quotes. You own some stock and you want to just quickly find out what that stock is doing today. Not only today, right this moment. You type in stocks and then whatever the code is. Well, BDL happened to be a company that I worked for. 
It was called uh, Big Daddy's Lounges or Flanagan Enterprises. And when you click on it, uh, uh, it gives you all the information and whatever the current selling. So if you do this at certain times during the day, you'll keep seeing the numbers. So you'll see whether it's going up or it's going down, or you're making you're making money or losing money, or maybe you should have invested and you didn't. What about speed test? A lot of times people say, how fast is your internet? Well, if you type in speed test in Google, what you're going to get is what you see there, and you'll see a blue box that says run speed test. You click on that box, and what it'll do, it'll show you what the download speed is and what the upload speed is. Now, I did this just before I changed companies, and I was getting 50 megabits down, and I was getting 15 plus up. I changed my company. And they rewired me and put in new boxes, new equipment and so on. And when I did the net, oh, and this was from another source. And then when I did it with the new company, this is what I get for, this is what I currently get, as a matter of fact. I get about 150 down, a little less, and then almost 150 up as well. So I'm glad I made the change. But you can use your search engine, run that speed test, and it'll tell you how fast your internet is both download and upload. You want to use either uh, either or uh, using the or operator or use the, they call it a pipe symbol, which is that uh, straight line that's above the backslash. And if you put that in, so let's say uh, we talked about earlier, we mentioned oh, what is an LED? Well, LED or LCD, which is the best? Well, I put LED or LCD and bingo, I get all kinds of articles that kind of describe what each of them is and then compare them. So when you've got two items, you can use the or or the pipe symbol and that will give you some information to compare them. Or let's say um, oh, People use the terms all the time, mini USB and micro USB, and I can never remember what they are. So I typed in mini SUB uh, USB and, and mic versus micro USB and big O. I'm getting pictures of both and explanations and even some articles that talk about both of them and compare them. So using the, uh, the versus or VS between two different items can bring up... Uh, the information that you want together, instead of looking for all everything about mini USB and then looking up everything on micro USB and then trying to make some sense out of it to combine them, let's say for a presentation, to explain to somebody, or just for you to understand it. Error messages is a good way to use your search engine. You get a an error message that comes up like this. Firefox is already want running, but is not responding. To open a new window, you must first close the existing Firefox process or restart your system. You do all of those things and this keeps popping up. You need to ask somebody for help. So what do you do? You say, well, I keep getting an error message. And they say, what was the error message? I don't know. Well, if you do a screen capture, and there's lots of ways to do that, and that would be a good... Uh, topic for one of these meetings or for one of your Q&A sessions in showing how to capture one, but if, if, if you didn't know how to do it. But let's say you, if, if you don't know how to do a screen capture, sit there and with the message up there and write down, Firefox is already running, but it's, in other words, write it all down on a piece of paper and then type it in to your search box. Firefox is already running, but not responding. Soon as I did that, I found a million over a million, almost a million and a half results. I don't want to read them all. So number one, I put it in quotes. Bingo, I got it down to 11,900, less than 12,000 results. Let's go back. We went from 1.3 million results by having just the words up there, putting it in quotes. We got it down to 12,000. And then you'll start seeing that all of these ones seem to be talking about the same thing, but there's different dates on some of these. So you might want to narrow it down even more. And so what you might do is you might also take uh, 
what you might want to do is put the word solution to eliminate those with a question and no answer. A lot of times when you're looking at problems, when you're doing a search, it's going to say, I had the same problem. Well, that you know, you're wasting time looking at these kinds of answers or a whole page of somebody says, I have this problem. And then everybody underneath says, I have the same problem. I have the same problem. But there's no solution to it. So if you put the word solution at the end, like I did, you're more, you're more likely to, the word solution will be there. So here's a solution to it. So use, use that when you can. And refine by choosing tools and a time period. Remember I mentioned earlier, you use tools and then past year. And so what I did, uh, the action cannot be, be, be completed. So using that same one, I said, okay, tools. And then just in the past year, I just want to know things that happened just this past year uh, where there were answers to that. So I'm not seeing something about Windows 7 or Windows XP, I'm seeing it about Windows 10. I mentioned earlier that you can use an asterisk as a wild card. You're gonna hate me for this part of the, this part of the presentation because I'm gonna put something in your head. You're gonna be singing it to yourself all day long. But let's say I remember a song that had the word trombone and I had a, and it had the word parade, but I can't remember. There were some other words in there and so on. So in quotes, I put trombones, asterisk, which means, and a whole bunch of anything else, and then the word parade, and then I put them both in quotes. And bingo, what pops up the exact thing that I wanted was the 76 trombones is a signature song for the musical play, The Music Man. 76 trombones led the big parade. So it was led the big goes in between them. And now I'm, you're going to be singing, if you remember that song, you're gonna be singing that song all day. So I apologize up front. Another thing that you can do when you're doing, using the Google search or any of the other search engines, use define. You don't have to go to merriamwebster.com or, or go anywhere else to a website just put in define colon perplex. Bingo, you'll get the, uh, uh, the pronunciation. You'll even see a little uh, a speaker there. And if you click on it, if your computer is set up, you'll even hear the word, it'll say the word. And then it'll give you the definition and, uh, and more than the definition. And so, <clears throat> excuse me. So you, you don't have to go to a website to get answers sometimes. A lot of times you'll go, you, you'll look up the word definition, you'll find Merriam-Webster, and then you go to the Merriam-Webster, and then you have to figure out the page. And then it says, oh, wait a minute, there's a lot of ads here, and you've got ad blocker on, so you got to turn that off before you can look. And then you put in the word you're looking for. This way, all you got to do is just dump it right into your search engine box. Same thing with a calculator. Type in a quick calculation in the search box and get the answer. Plus, minus, star for times, or the slash for divide. Symbols are and, and the prefaces to do a simple equation. So you'll notice here that I did 2,500 plus five, 1,500. Bingo, it comes right up and says 400. And it gives me a calculator to work with if I want to do some other things or show some other numbers. So it's, again, a time saver. A num range. Search a range of numbers. Note the two periods between the two numbers. So I'm looking for the, the number one songs between 1958 and 1960. When I do that, bingo, I get a list. A list of the top 100 number one singles from 1959 to 1969. Uh, a list of number one singles from 1958 and so on. So it answered my question right away. And it, and it narrowed it down. So I didn't have to go to number one songs and then go find a list and then go through a whole bunch of years. It, it narrowed it down to a, uh, a period between two dates or two, two times. Site specific. Use the site colon operator to search only within a, search, uh, a certain website. So here is, I looked at computerbooters.org space the word hill or the name hill. That's what it looked like right here. Bingo, I got Patricia Hill, board of directors, inside the club news features, January newsletter highlights, every place that the name hill 
shows up on your website. There it is. You have a UPC code and you want to you want to get some more information about that item. I happen to the day I did this uh, slide, I happen to have a box for a, a hard drive sitting on my desk. So I just I just typed in the UPC code for it. Bingo. It shows it was a Seagate backup five terabyte external hard drive. And immediately and then you can you can go see it. But the one I want to probably go look at would be one at Best Buy or or at Seagate or something, because some of the first ones are going to be people trying to sell them. And I don't know who they are. But it immediately, by putting in the UPC code in, gave me the item. Now, this doesn't work with everything because not everything is in, a, in the giant UPC code database. But certainly, you can play with this at home uh, uh, after the meeting. Please wait till the meeting's over. But you can, you can uh, play with this and type in a UPC code or anything that's handy, and you'll find that it works. Okay. When, I, when you search with a possible word, uh, what I'm showing here is a huge long page, just so you kind of see. But what I, was, what I was doing here is I'm trying to figure out the right wording. And I can't, Robin had a, a, her, a, her past phone, not the one she's using now. She had a phone that every time she called me, she, her voice was muddled. I couldn't understand it. And she couldn't understand. Everything was muddled. And I muddled, is that a word? I don't know. So I typed in cause of muddled voice calls. And when I did that, it, it actually figured out what that word was. Possible cause of sudden speech problems. What if your smartphone's voice quality sucks? And it's a good article. Uh, difficulty with speech. And so it, it recognized the word muddled, which surprised me in itself. But if you want to use similar terms, let's say, I don't know, if, maybe muddled isn't the right word. So I put this little symbol before it to return similar terms. So I put the little thing right there, this item, this little, whoops, this item right here. And bingo, when I did that, it gave me some really good answers. And it also understood what I was trying to say and used other terms other than the word muddle. So that's a good thing to, to use. Okay, let's say we've got an item and we want to find out what this item is. Found this at a flea market or a Goodwill store. Thought it was cute. Brought it home. So there's got to be more of these around. Uh, how do you find out what it is? I got an item. And, but there's such a thing as using reverse image search and you want to identify an image. So what you do is you got, you're going to have to take a picture of it. And then you go into your search engine and go to images. When you go to images, you'll see a camera. When you click on the camera, you can drag, upload, or link to a picture. So it could be a picture online, but if it's not, you can upload a picture. So I took the picture that I had, which was here, and I uploaded it. Now, just so you know, I tried all these other pictures first and couldn't find the answer. So it doesn't always work, but you got a pretty good shot at it anyway, or you got a possibility of it. So anyway, so I uploaded that picture. And when I did, it said, oh, what? Well, it's a figurine. So what I did is then go in, but it's an image. So it went to images. And as you look down here, it says visually similar images. And this is what that showed. And here's one. Here's the original that I, that I uploaded. Here's one. Boy, don't they look a, a lot alike? They probably came from the same place or from the same uh, source. And when I click on this one, it says vintage Pendlefin rabbit figurine. So Pendlefin is the word I want to do a search on. So I do a search on Pendlefin and look what I find. All kinds of other figurines from that same source. And so now I know there are a lot of other ones out there. Now I can start looking for other ones if I wanted to make a set of them. 
So by by having a certain item, taking a picture of it, I was able to find out information about it. I've tried this with some some uh, paintings, and I've had some somewhat good luck in some cases, and sometimes not. But you, it's at least a place to start when you're looking to, to identify something you either have in your hand, an item, or a picture of something. So again, I mentioned earlier Boolean searches uh, and the Boolean terms are and. That searches for all search, uh, search terms you specified. Uh, search Amazon and Rainforest for websites that include both terms. The word and is, uh, is, is guessed or is automatically presumed, is the word I'm looking for, is automatically presumed. If you just put Amazon and Rainforest, it presumes the word and or or. It may not be either. So, so you want to put the word in and, so both words have to be in there. If you want just one or the other, then you can use the word or or just don't put the word or in. And if you put draw in, in the word paint, it's assuming either one or the other or both. But if you want one or the other, then use the word or. And then the group word in a phrase with a quotation mark, sausage biscuits will give you the words together. So if you just put sausage and biscuits, you're gonna get anything that's got sausage in it, anything that's got biscuits in it, and you'll have some that have both and they may not be together. So you want to put it in quotes and that will give you the exact phrase. Uh, Boolean operators are case sensitive. Google may not care about the upper and lower case in search terms, but Boolean searches are case sensitive. So uh, for a Boolean operator to work, it must be in all caps. So you want the word or in caps if you're going to look for Windows or Mac. Uh, you're going to get a different result if you do it with lowercase. Google search tips, tips and hacks. One of the largest hurdles of using Google is the amount you must weed through. Manipulate your Google search with a couple of hacks to retrieve more relevant sets of results. So like I, this is a kind of a repeat of uh, a summary, site colon, a minus sign, and then the term, the file type colon, uh, cache retrieves an older version of the page from a Google cache, for instance. Uh, refining the search. There are many other ways to manipulate your search with Google. The word order. Sometimes you, uh, if, if you can't find exactly what you're looking for and you've got a couple of terms, reverse them. Use the, uh, use the asterisk wildcard for a word or a phrase that you can't remember or you want to, and so on. Use the tilde in front of the word I mentioned that, showed you that for synonyms or like the words that are alike. Stemming, Google will automatically stem a word. Stem, stem will find stems, stemming, stemmer, et cetera, unless you put in, uh, put a plus in front of it. Uh, common words, drop superfluous uh, words such as as, and, but, this, that. From your search, Google ignores them anyway. So you save some time and don't even bother typing them. Uh, some more search operators, uh, define colon stock uh, is a conversion, uh, a calculator, and so on. The area code, find a location. Just type in area code colon and it'll, it'll find it. The tip calculator, a timer, a stopwatch, uh, flights to and from a location will display a destination of a table of outbound and inbound. Uh, uh, flights, from, for instance, flights, flights Oakland would be flights to Oakland or flights from Oakland. Uh, translate a word. You can quickly translate a word by put the word translate and then the word. Uh, using the advanced search uh, is sometimes you'll see it says advanced search when you're doing a search. The advanced search page can be helpful if you don't remember all the search operators. Most of the advanced features are supported here. Under settings, you can also find options to customize your search settings. So if, if you can't remember a lot of what I told, told you, go to the advanced search and you, you'll see 
you'll have some choices there. Did you know Google has some hidden games in search? You can play these games with the default google.com itself without visiting any other site. Then there are other games that were part of Google's famous doodles, but aren't available easily since the doodle keeps changing. Don't worry though, there are sites where these playable doodles are still active today. But here are some of the fun hidden Google games you can play within Google search or the browser. Solitaire, Minesweeper, Tic-Tac-Toe, Pac-Man, Snake, Atari Breakout, a Google a day, and Spooky Cat. For instance, here's Solitaire. If you type in the word Solitaire and click it, you'll see at the top will be the Solitaire game. And you push the button play and you'll have some choices there and you can play Solitaire directly from your browser uh, search engine and you won't have to open up a program. You don't have to download anything or anything like that. Good way to waste time. And uh, since I sent the, uh, the, all of the slides, you'll be able to use these. You've got, this is how you find the various ones, Solitaire, Minesweeper. Just at the end of you, question mark Q equals and find them. I did uh, check these out and they should all work. And I found this uh, doing some updates. And at the bottom is the, uh, the link to it. It's Google search operators, a complete list, 42 advanced operators. So you can go to that page and look at a lot of what I said and some additional ones on top of it. So your search time now should be more productive. So with that, I'm ready for some questions.